Okay guys, the next thing that we want to do is talk about the polar transformation. And we can recompute the area of a small polar rectangle by using this transformation and doing something uh, that we call taking the Jacobian of the transformation. If you haven't watched the video on Jacobians yet, maybe you can skip this one and go back to it after you have. Uh, those notes are chapter 15.9. But for now, let's start with uh, redefining what the polar transformation is. So the polar transformation actually doesn't do anything to the point. So the polar transformation takes in a point. In this case, we're going to consider this point to live in the r theta plane. So I'm going to label the x, y axes. We're going to use them in a minute. But remember, the coordinates of this point P in polar coordinates are the length of the radius of the point uh, of the circle that it lies on with respect to the origin, and then the positive angle that it makes with the positive x-axis. Okay, so this is the point R theta. And the polar transformation, when we apply this transformation T, like I said, it doesn't move the point at all. It's very choppy there. It doesn't move the point at all. It just changes how we describe the point. So this is supposed to be the same point in the same place on the plane. But now, instead of writing P in its polar coordinates, we represent P by its rectangular coordinates. So remember, the X coordinate is here, the Y coordinate is tight up here, and now we can think of this point P as lying on the diagonal of a rectangle whose other corner, the other, di the other end of the diagonal, is at the origin. Okay, and as we talked about last time, the polar coordinate transformation is that X comma Y is equal to, we have to have two functions now, one to determine x and one to determine y. And so the x is equal to r cosine of theta, and the y is equal to r sine of theta. This just comes from basic trigonometry, because remember, this point P lies on a circle centered at the origin whose radius is r. Okay, so this is our polar transformation. What we want to do now is take the Jacobian of the transformation, and again, uh, the best thing you can do for yourself here is if you haven't learned about the Jacobian yet, either wait and come back to this video, or jump ahead, watch the videos on the Jacobian, specifically the ones by the three blue, one brown, because they're very, they're very nice, um, and then come back to this uh, and watch it again. So again, our transformation is that T of R theta is equal to this combination of functions, x is equal to r cosine of theta, sorry, r cosine of theta, and y is equal to r sine of theta. And the definition of the Jacobian, so the Jacobian, Jacobian of this transformation, it's defined by these kind of funky symbols, the partial of uh, x, y, with respect to the partial of r theta, and then these vertical lines mean that we need to take a determinant. So the way that we compute this is that we take the determinant of a matrix whose entries are the partial derivatives. So we've got the x dr, dy dr, dx d theta, and dy d theta. And we just compute these things. So the x, the derivative of x with respect to r is just cosine theta. The derivative of y with respect to r is just sine theta. These are partial derivatives. Derivative of x with respect to theta is now um, minus r sine of theta. And the derivative of y with respect to theta is positive r cosine of theta. So what's inside these vertical bars right now, this is called the Jacobian matrix. And sometimes in other areas of math as you move forward, this is actually the thing that's called the Jacobian. But in our class, and for Calc 3 purposes, what we really want to do is take the determinant of this matrix. And the way that you do that is just this crisscross multiplication. You multiply these two together, you multiply these two together across the diagonals, and you subtract the second one from the first one. So that, that's what the determinant means. And so when we do this process, we end up with r cosine squared theta minus a negative. You have to subtract this second one. So minus a negative becomes plus r sine squared theta, and then of course we can factor out the r. We've got cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, and by the Pythagorean identity, this is just r. So the Jacobian of our transformation that takes points in the polar plane to points in the xy plane, 
Uh, the Jacobian of this transformation is just R. All right, so what? That's the question, right? So what? And again, um, if you haven't studied the section on transformations yet, maybe you can just watch this now. You don't have to question why this is true. But in the transformation section, we said that to transform an integral over a region D of f of xy, so this integral is in the xy plane. So let's say, just for the sake of this, let's say that the domain D is a disk. And this would be a good time to use polar coordinates, right? Um, and the, everything here is represented in the xy plane. Then what you have to do is you have to transform this, okay? And so actually our map t, our transformation t now goes this way, okay? And I'm still going to draw the xy axes, but now we have to describe this region in the r theta plane. And the nice thing about polar coordinates is that it doesn't move the points. So the region D looks exactly the same in both spaces. So our double integral, we don't have to worry about transforming the domain. We just have to transform the rest of the integral. The function f, so f is a function of x and y, but remember we have a way to transform x and y. So f of x, y. This can be written as f of r cosine theta, r sine theta, and because everything here just depends on r and theta, we can just write this as f of r theta. So the transformation changes the function. We have to do a little work there. We'll see that in the examples. But we don't have to change anything in our writing. And the thing that we really have to think about is what happens to dA. Okay, and this is where, um, if you haven't seen the video on transformations, you, you just have to trust me. But dA in the xy plane is always equal to the Jacobian of this transformation. So dxy, partial dxy, over partial r theta times uh, dr d theta in our new space. And we just computed that this function right here is r, right? And so we have to multiply our integrand by r, and then we can integrate dr d theta. Okay, so in the examples moving forward, we're just going to jump straight to this formula. But this is the key here, okay? We need to multiply our integrand by r, transform our, the variables of our integrand into r's and thetas, and then we can just integrate away. And if the domain is nice, like maybe, uh, you know, if it's suited for polar coordinates, like maybe this disk would be, then um, polar coordinates might actually be better for us. Okay, so we'll give that a shot in the next few videos.